Welcome, welcome everyone. I am so excited to be here with you. We're gonna go ahead and just give people maybe like one or two more minutes to hop on. Um, you know, who knows how the day was going, but as we wait, I would love to, to hear where everyone is tuning in from, right? So currently I am in Bend, Oregon. You'll hear more about my life in just a moment. Uh, but I would love to hear where you're tuning in from, what is something that you're excited about in your life right now, and you can go ahead and drop it in the chat. All right, so when, when you hop on, when you are ready, drop it in the chat. What you're going to find out in just a minute that this hopefully is going to be very interactive, right? So I'm going to talk and teach a little bit about getting out of your head and into your life. Um, and I'm going to be asking questions. We're going to be doing exercises. And so I really would love for you to drop it, like any questions that you have, drop it in the chat, any comments that you have, drop it in the chat. If it's not about something that we're talking about in this moment, then I can come back to it at the end. Hopefully we'll have time for questions and stuff at the end. Uh, but I really want you to get out of this exactly what you want to get out of it, right? So make sure that you get what you came for, whatever that is, all right? And that you walk away with that and only you can ensure that. So please go ahead when you have a second and you're tuning in, Drop in where you're tuning in from, anywhere in the world, and uh, and let's see, let's see what kind of worldly people that we have around here. So, I think um, I think we'll go ahead and get started. So, I am Jilly Johnston, Cambridgeshire countryside UK. I have a few clients on the countryside of the UK. So fun. Hi, Sally. Rose, Denver, Colorado, my home. Uh, awesome. Sweden. So fun. Love it. Yeah. So as you, as you tune in, keep driving in Mexico city, how fun is this? I don't know if I've, I've done stuff with on three different continents with people from three different continents. I don't know if it's been this diverse in, in where people have come from. How awesome. Yeah. And I'm in Bend, Oregon. So yeah, I'm Jilly Johnston. I am a worthiness coach. All right, a speaker, a podcaster, a joy spreader, and we're here to talk about getting out of your head and into your life and overcoming self-doubt and confidently creating the life that sets your soul on fire, which is like what I'm obsessed with and what I want to bring to everyone. And so, um, like I said, I want this to be interactive. I want you to drop, I'm going to be asking questions, giving you time to reflect. I want you to drop like your answers in the chat, like, let's talk about it. Let's relate to one another. Let's connect with one another um, in the best way that we can in this digital world from people all over the world. How neat is that? So let's see uh, a little bit about me. All right. And some highlights in the past five to seven years of my life. So first I'm from outside of Chicago. I moved to Denver about six years ago. That's where I consider home. Um, I was a division one athlete. I call myself a recovering perfectionist, a recovering people pleaser. I am a high achiever. I love adventure. And so I've been a van lifer for two and a half years. So this is my van coming to you from Bend, Oregon in my van. And um, let's see, I'm gonna go ahead and bring my notes up. And I had no idea how to build. So I thought a jigsaw was a puzzle and yet learned how to build a beautiful van, right? While building a massively successful and impactful business that has impacted tens of thousands of people all over the world. In the past, I guess, like less than five, less than five years, I've done over 300 workshops. I've had just in the past year over speaking, 50 speaking engagements. Um, and I'm also a fortune 500 speaker. So that's like a little bit, you know, about me, um, kind of like what my life looks like right now. And in the process, I've also started three different women's movements. So I started something called Love Letters to Yourself, which is all about self-love. I started a worthiness movement, which is like currently what I'm in. And then my newest development with my beautiful best friend and Rose, who is in this picture and also on today, um, we started Woman Up and it's a collective of like-hearted women who are here to uplift and grow together. And so 
I've served thousands of women and people, this isn't just women, but people between the ages of seven and 80. And you, I cannot tell you how many times doubt, imposter syndrome, failure has come up for me. I've also co-founded a nonprofit in Huanchaco, Peru that um, if anyone has been, please check it out. Um, and we've had served 80 plus families, started a sustainable women's business that is still running today and helped raise tens of thousands of dollars, right? So I traveled the world, have done all of these different stepping stones. And as I've gone, I've realized like I value freedom. I value joy. I value impact, right? And all of these experiences have allowed me to see the values that I have. And yet I never saw someone doing what I did, like what I do now with the freedom, with the impact, with the income. And I think so many times we wait for someone else to show us the way. We wait for evidence to show us that it's possible. And I didn't have it. And so kind of using all of my values and everything that I was learning in life, I started asking myself, like, what could I create if I wanted something? And even though I had never seen it done before, like what limitations would I need to let go of in order to create that in my life? And that is what I want to bring you to today, because it's time to get out of your head and into your life. So the other part about this, right, is we see other people's highlight reel. Right. So right now you're seeing my highlight reel. And there's a great quote by Steve Furtick that says we compare our highlight reels. Sorry, we compare others highlight reels to our behind the scenes. And so what we don't see on social media, what we don't hear from so many people that do presentations who speak, whatever, is the realness that comes with it. Right. And so the other thing that I also wanted to share is also the darker sides, the things that I've had to overcome, the things that I deal with on a daily, daily basis, because when we're comparing our, our behind the scenes to others highlight reel, it's really easy to discredit ourselves by saying they have something that we don't. It's really easy to say, well, I guess I'm just not cut out for it. I'm just not enough. Right. And I'm here to tell you that that is not true. And that the more that we can share our stories, the more that we can begin to share these vulnerable parts of us, right? The easier we can give ourselves permission that no matter what we've dealt with in life, like we can step into this version of us who still gets to create a life that we are wildly obsessed with, right? And that pushes the limits and gets to set and be an example for everyone else. So with my mental health, I've dealt with crippling anxiety and depression, right? And this is something that I still deal with on a day-to-day -day basis, right? Some seasons of life are harder than others. And through this, it's taught me to advocate for myself and making sure that I always support myself with therapy, coaching, tools, practices, things like that, that help me be able to cope with this and still lead the life that I want to lead. Then physical health. I currently am navigating Lyme disease and adrenal fatigue. So I, again, had to learn to advocate for myself and currently now of like, how do I relate to myself now with a lower and different capacity than where I was a year ago, two years ago, five years ago? And what is this asking me, inviting me to step into for myself, right? Even though I'm, I am dealing with this current circumstance, and we're going to be talking a lot about circumstances today, a lot about thoughts, feelings, actions, and results in our life. So these are, this is, these are all circumstances. Then relational health. Right. So I've overcome sexual abuse, broken family dynamics, alcoholism within my family, emotional abuse. Right. And I decided early on that I didn't want like my past and my programming and what was modeled for me to play out into my future. And so I took it on myself to say, OK, again, if I get to create the rules, if I get to create the beliefs, what would I create in my relationships and who do I need to become in order to do that, right? And so I'm so excited. I'm eloping in August to my soulmate on a glacier in Alaska, and we are so pumped about it, right? Um, but again, it was a circumstance of all of these circumstances I took and decided that I wanted to choose. And then lastly, not lastly, right? This could go on and on and on, but also talking about the humanist and grief, and understanding that grief is a part of life, right? That I've lost my best friend four years ago that turned my world upside down, lost through a mother-in-law to COVID and then my aunt to cancer this year. And so like understanding that like grief happens in our life, right? And it teaches us so much and it gives us an opportunity to kind of re-examine our life. 
but understanding that all of these things have happened to me in the past you know, in my, in my lifetime, most of these have happened in the past five years. And yet we are still able to create these things, right? These highlight reels in our life, regardless of what the behind the scenes is. And that's what we're talking about today. So why am I telling you this, right? Is there's so much power in, in the words me too, right? And there, there's also a lot of other weight that comes with those words, but life is going to happen and that circumstances are going to happen. We cannot control circumstances, right? We, we can't control systems. We can't control other people. But the thing that we can control is our perspective, right? Our, our thoughts, how we react, right? And what we choose and who we choose to be. And so if we try to control, run from, avoid, right? When we use all these coping tools, unhealthy coping tools, we're denying ourselves the lessons of the full human experience. And so I love, I forget who wrote this. I think it was in the onion, but there was a whole like comic real thing in the onion. And they talk about like, let's not talk about pursuing happiness. Let's talk about pursuing the pursuit of wholeness, right? So let's look at life as like an entire pie right? We want the whole pie. We don't want a slice of the pie. We don't want a part of the pie, right? We want the whole pie. And in that whole pie, there is grief because there is the depth of love. There is disappointment and failure because of the hopes and dreams, right? And so in this spectrum, like we have to have both the light and the dark. And I'm guessing if you're here, you also are a love of nature, right? If you love to travel, if that's like one of your things, which I know everyone here does. Nature, this is why I love nature. It has every answer. It has everything mirroring back to us and reflecting back to us, like the exact message that we're needing. And so this idea of like 50-50 of light and dark is mirrored back to us in nature all the time, right? So meaning that 50% of the time things are good, 50% of the time things are hard. Now, if we look at the seasons of life or seasons you know, of the earth, there's the, you know, the light will last longer, days will last longer in the summer, nights will last longer in the winter time. None of these are a problem. It's okay if they're in balance at different parts of the year because overall they balance out. And when we stop fighting it, when we stop fighting the darkness or we stop fighting the light or we stop fighting the longer days or the longer nights and we accept them, that's when we get to embrace them. That's when we get to enjoy them. That's when all of a sudden, instead of going 50-50, right? 50 light, 50 dark, 50 good, 50 hard, all of a sudden it may turn to 80-20 right? Because we learn to appreciate and live into the experience in which we were being given at any point in time. And so imagine if you no longer felt like life had to happen to you, right? But you had control over one thing and that's how you chose to see things, right? And I'm not preaching toxic positivity here. Nope, not doing toxic positivity, right? But understanding that you have a choice of perspective and you are allowed to feel all of the human emotion. And so we, I share all of this because as when we no longer have the story, she's different. She has something that I don't have, right? She, you know, I'm not cut out for this. There's something wrong with me. When we no longer have that narrative, all of a sudden we have our power, right? But until we share our behind the scenes, right? in isolation and secrecy, our shame grows. And when our shame grows, it holds us back and it keeps us stuck. So the problem is not self-doubt. That is not the problem. The problem is not failure. Neither of these things have to be problems at all, right? And sometimes, and what I've heard people say, right? And what I've heard people, making sure I have my timer on, what I've heard people say and kind of what they, they struggle with, right, is that they believe that self-love means like the absence of self-doubt, right? They believe that success means the absence of failure, right? Or seeing their worth means the absence of failure or attachment or um, self-doubt. And that's not true, 
right? Self-doubt is not a problem. Failure is not a problem. The meaning, the only meaning that either one of those things have is the meaning that we give it. The only power that they have is the power that we give it. The only weight that they have is the weight that we give it. And so our past, right? The failure, the doubt, how we've seen ourselves in the past, the results we've created in our past from that place of doubt and failure does not have to dictate our future, right? But sometimes we hold ourselves back from even dreaming about our future because we let our past dictate what we believe is possible for ourselves because we're taking circumstances and results of circumstances and saying that that's gonna dictate what we can create in our future. That is not true. Our past does not dictate our future, does not dictate our future, only one thing does, our thinking. That is the only thing that dictates our future, all right? So it's like also, I think, that this idea of self-love and worthiness, like our destination, right? Or our life is a destination. When I get here, then I'll be happy. When I get here, then I'll have confidence. When I get here, when I do this, then I'll be ready, right? Like you can go ahead and throw an emoji if like you've ever thought that down in the chat, right? I think we all have. And this isn't a destination. None of this is. Your life is not a destination, right? You just keep moving the goalpost. So when you get to that goal that you have currently, you have already set another goal, meaning that it's always moving. It's always progressing forward. So you will never get there because there is no there, right? We have to learn to like be in the present moment and create from a space of enoughness, right? And that helps us get out of our head. So what if we could change the weight that we gave them? What if we could create less meaning for self-doubt and failure, how would that, how would that help us and open us up to possibility in our lifetime? So we're going to learn how to take the doubt and the failure and the inner critic out of the driver's seat, right? We actually don't want them to go away completely because the beautiful part about this is everything that is in us is designed to protect us. It comes from a primal and primitive brain, right? So it's all designed to protect us. So we don't have to get, get rid of it completely. It's never going to go away. It's here to protect you, but let's take them out of the driver's seat and put them in the back seat, right? They can be, they can be a backseat driver that we learn to shut up over time, right? So let's talk a little bit about worthiness, okay? So the worthiness is the quality of being good enough. So this is the actual definition of worthiness, is the quality of being good enough. And I bring worthiness into everything for every person because I truly believe that this is the foundation of everything that we build from. So if we create an experience in our life, what we believe we are worthy of. So if we've attracted like our dream person into our life, but we don't believe that we're worthy of love, then guess what? We're going to self-sabotage and we're going to actually like not allow ourselves to experience the love that we've attracted into our life. If we have attracted impact, income, success, but we don't feel worthy of it, right? We're going to self-sabotage and not let ourselves experience the exact thing that we've created in our life, right? Because we don't feel good enough. So the unworthiness, right? I talk, I always talk about in everything I do, worthiness stories and unworthiness stories, right? So worthiness stories that are, I am good enough. I can create, I am capable. I am resilient, right? I am open to miracles, like all of these things, but our unworthiness story is then the quality of not being good enough. So where does good enough and not good enough come from? Does anyone have any guesses? Where does good enough and not good enough come from? I'm going to give you a minute to childhood. Yes. Upbringing. Right. But I guess it's a narrative, right? Like we may have been told it and then we internalize it. Yes. Belief, right? It is, it is what we believe about ourselves, meaning it is a judgment, right? It is a judgment that, that others may have placed on us that we then internalize and place on ourselves. But what we know about judgment is we can change it, right? It is a thought, it's a belief, and it might take time, might be painful, it might be challenging, but if we no longer want to buy into these stories, if we no longer want to, to let our childhood have power over us, our upbringing have power over us, what people have said to us, 
projected onto us, if we no longer want them to have power, then we get to change our judgment on ourselves, right? So there's a really beautiful Native American story about wolves that live inside either one of us. There is a light wolf and a dark wolf. And I like to talk about it in terms of like, there is a wolf that believes that we are enough and feeds that. And there's a wolf that the dark wolf is the one that we are not enough, the unworthiness, right? Lack of worthiness. The light wolf is love and abundance. The darker wolf is lack and fear. And with every belief, they feed on our thoughts. They feed on what we believe. And with every belief, we get to choose which wolf we feed, right? And we can only feed one at a time. And the more you feed one, the stronger that it gets, the bigger that it gets, right? And the less you feed one, the more depleted that it gets, right? So which wolf do you want to feed? And as soon as you do that, you again put the power back in your court of, okay, what is the choice that I want to make right now, right? And I'm going to talk a little bit in the later on, right, in this is like what thoughts really matter right? And that there's instincts and there's habits, right? And then there's choice. And so we don't have to be hard on ourselves. We get to have grace. There's no such thing as perfection, right? And Woman Up, we always talk about progress over perfection. That's what we're going for. Okay. And let's talk about progress. So if anyone wants an incredible book, The Gap and the Gain by Dan Sullivan and Ben Hardy, I think that's, I think that's the second author's name. This is the idea. So this is something I've been teaching for over a decade. And yeah, I really love how they talk about it. And it's a really powerful book. Just great reminder. It's probably nothing that you've never heard before, especially if you've been in the personal development world, but it's just like, it's very powerful. So this is kind of the idea um, that let's look at enoughness and worthiness and unworthiness and not enoughness, right? So when we are constantly comparing ourselves to highlight reels, when we're constantly comparing ourselves to the vision that we have, right? And this is, I think, one of the problems with goal setting, right? When we set goals and we compare ourselves to those goals, they are meant to be in the future. They are meant to be forward. They are meant to be anywhere other than where we are right now. So what we have a tendency to do is then we compare ourselves to this vision. We compare ourselves to these goals. There is a gap. There's meant to be a gap. That's why you set goals, right? You are here and you want to create this, right? And by the time you get here, you've already set another goal, right? So you are never enough. You are always behind. You always wish you were further. And so in this space, when we compare ourselves to our goals, when we compare ourselves to the vision, of course, we're going to feel not enough. Duh. Duh. Like, that's why we actually created the goal in the first place is because we want something different than what we have right now. And so understanding that when you are comparing yourself to the vision, to the goal, to this future self, of course you feel not enough. And you want to know the fastest way to get yourself into your head and out of your life, right, is through comparison and is through telling yourself that you are failing. So let's switch it. So how do you feel enough? right? Taking, seeing where you were 90 days ago, a year ago, five years ago, and seeing where you are now, seeing your growth, seeing your progress. When you measure backwards and see and give yourself credit and feel worthy of the celebration and credit and acknowledgement that you deserve, all of a sudden you look at your life in awe. All of a sudden, you look at your life and you're like, holy cow, look at what I have created, right? And we're going to do this today. When you see progress, you all of a sudden feel enough. You feel like you're getting somewhere, right? You feel like you're making steps forward. It inspires you. And so what has, right, held you back from doing that? So today we're going to walk away with mindset tools, already started, how worthiness impacts what we create already talked about it, reprogramming self-doubt, getting into that, and overcoming imposter syndrome. So first, please put the name of the book in the chat. Sure will. Remind me at the end, okay? If I don't do it at the end, remind me at the end. But it is called The Gap and the Gain. The Gap and the Gain. I'll put in the chat later. It's really, really good. 
literally life-changing, right? And business-changing and life-changing. I think it is like, thanks Rose. This has been huge and monumental in my life for giving myself credit, right? And so I want to take us through an exercise real fast. And I want you to write out these questions. I'm going to give you a couple minutes to write them out. I want you to drop them in the chat. All right. And I want us to talk about them because again, as we learn what other people are dealing with literally all over the world within this community, we feel not so alone, right? And we realize that there's nothing wrong with us, that this is just a part of life and we can create anyways. So what do you see as not enough in your life? And what, where do you wish you were further ahead? So pause on the third question. Don't do the third question quite yet. But what do you see is not enough in your life? And you don't have to drop these in the chat if you don't want to, but you're more than welcome to. But you, I will ask you to drop the third one in a second. And where do you wish you were further ahead? So let's look at like career, right? Let's look at freedom. Let's look at family, relationships, right? Love, friendships, income, health. So I want you just to go ahead and just for a minute, go ahead and take a minute. We're not staying in this place, don't worry. But I want you to see how this idea of not enough is showing up in your life. If you don't have a pen and paper, now is your time to grab one because this is just first of many questions that I'm about to ask you. And then when you feel like you are complete with these questions, drop like an okay or a thumbs up in the chat. So I know, because unfortunately I can't see your faces. So I can't make awkward eye contact with you. So drop in the chat that you're done or okay or thumbs up. When you feel complete with what do you see is not enough in your life and where do you wish you were further ahead? Thank you. I'm guessing it's Rosara, such a pretty name. Done, thank you, Sally. All right, so now looking at this and seeing this, like how does this make you feel in your life, right? Like how does this make you feel looking at your life this way, right? Maybe it's defeated, maybe it's frustrated, sad, disappointed, right? I want you to go ahead and like drop in the chat, like how does seeing this make you feel in your life? Not adequate, not enough, right? Totally. You feel like you're failing. You feel not enough. You feel like there's something wrong with you, right? And all of this feels hopeless and sad and frustrating and like you're failing, okay? So we're not gonna stay here though. I want you to ask yourself, and I'm gonna give you a couple minutes to do this, what have you created from where you are now in the past five years? I want you to look at yourself five years ago. That is so much time. <laughs> five years is so much time, okay? What have you created in the past five years? I want you to write down everything. What you've created, overcome, experienced, changed. What have you created in the past five years? And I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you a few minutes to do this. And this will also be a great exercise to take with you and do for like 20 minutes. And if you are a part of a team, if you have a business partner with your spouse, with your family, do this exercise, give them this gift. What have you created in the past five years?
and have about 30 more seconds. And I want you to start dropping a couple in the chat. Like what left you in awe? What were some of the biggest changes, biggest creations of the past five years? For me, like five years ago, van life wasn't even on my radar. Having a successful coaching business and speaking business was not, like it was a dream, it was a vision, but wasn't anything that I, it, I had no idea how I was going to do it. I hadn't even met my fiance yet. Crazy. I recreated me, overcame myself. So good. Yeah. Look at who you've turned into. Look at what it took to recreate you. Look what you had to face. Reinvented my biz. Totally. And that takes so much. And in that, Rosara, I'm sure that like in that you recreated so much and had to face so much and had to overcome so much and like all the uncertainty. Like look what you created. Keep dropping them in. I want to see them. Like I healed my relationship with my body. It's just, it's so crazy. It healed so many relationships in my life. Like I am, of course, at the core, like I'm the same person, but I don't even recognize the life that I have. Right. It's so cool. All right. So how different do you feel answering this question? Right. So now looking at this question, how do you feel? Drop it in the comments. I feel hopeful, inspired, excited, motivated, confident, powerful, resilient, proud. So good, Dennis. So proud. So grateful. And so what changed? Very grateful. Totally. What changed, right? Because you took the same circumstance. You and your life right now, presently. You, right here. You took the same circumstance. And you saw it two different ways and it created two completely different feelings, right? And so where, what do you want to act from? What do you want to create from? This is the same circumstance, your life currently, and you just gave yourself the gift of seeing the progress, seeing how much you come. And now all of a sudden you feel reborn, you feel grateful, you feel proud, you feel inspired right? A big shift in perspective, working on how we react to things, stop fighting what is and learning to go with the flow. Yeah. So now seeing this so many times we don't create, right? Because we are afraid we're going to get complacent, right? We don't see ourselves or celebrate ourselves because we feel like we're going to get complacent. We feel like we're going to give up. We feel like we are like, it just isn't going to, we're going to lose our fire when that's just not true. What happens when we celebrate ourselves, what happens when we see the progress, it re-inspires us, it reinvigorates us, it makes us proud, and we want to create more of it. This is how the law of attraction works. This is the truth. This is how the results in your life are yours, and they are created by your thinking. So now I want you to ask, all right, what has held you back from seeing your life this way, right? Is it like, it's too good to be true? right? Or good things, bad things happen to like people who get, right? Or it's selfish, right? Fear. Yeah. What is prevent? Why? What are you afraid of? So Sally, even digging in a little bit more, what are you afraid of? What has prevented you from allowing awe into your life? Yeah. Fear of success. Totally. Right? Maybe fear of what other people are going to think, fear of what other people are going to say, Fear of really being found out, imposter syndrome, 
fear of not being enough, feel that one totally. Right. And so fear of making mistakes. Yeah. Because all of a sudden the mistakes and not being enough, like, what are you making it mean about you? The only reason we have this fear is because we're making it mean something inherent about us, our value and worth as human beings, when that's just not true, right? That's why this is going to change the world. People don't want to be wrong. People don't want to have hard conversations. People don't want to admit that they're wrong or make mistakes because they are making it mean that they are not enough. And if they are not enough, then they are not worthy, right? Worthy of life, worthy of love, right? And then they're alone and afraid and back in our like primitive days, if you were alone, you died, right? So it comes back to this like tribal primitive mentality that we have to be a part of something, right? And so this idea of like this, what is this mindset protecting you from? Fear of rejection, fear of making mistakes, right? It's making so I don't have to be vulnerable. I don't have to get hurt and feel like I'm going to die because of shame. And the thing is with these mindsets, right, is that they're all protecting us from something. So our minds and our bodies, they want the path of least resistance, right? So we learn how to run and move our bodies, right? In a path of least resistance that uses the least amount of energy that is the most efficient that our bodies can do. Our minds are the same way. So our minds don't want resistance. They want to find the fastest, easiest path from A to B. And a lot of times, right, that is our programming. That is what we witnessed growing up. That is what was modeled for us, told us what we believed. It is so ingrained in our mind. It was such deep neural pathways that we automatically think that that's the only way to get from A to B. What I'm going to say is, no, you get to rewire that brain. You get to create new neural pathways, right? And that your brain is going to automatically want to try to protect you and go in the path of least resistance, but you get to choose something different, even if it's a little harder, right? This also, this mindset, this stuff is protecting you, like fear protects you and keeps you alive, right? Like back in the day, like being afraid of fire, right? Or burning ourselves or hurting ourselves, being attacked by a tiger or whatever. These things kept us alive. And so now like those parts of our brain are re-triggered when we're in fear, but they don't actually make sense anymore because we're not going to die. And we just have to remind ourselves of that. Right. So let's see Q and a, um, yes, it is possible to watch the full thing live later. Not a problem. Okay. Um, cool. Shoot. I don't know how to get out of this now. Okay. So 95% of our life is created by our subconscious. Only 5% is created by our conscious mind. So it's so important that we really dive into ask these questions, become aware of our thoughts and aware of our beliefs, because that is what is actually creating our life. So if you look at your life and you're like, wait a second, where did this come from? Why are these same patterns or these same people coming up? I thought I healed this already, right? It's because you haven't change that subconscious mind, right? And there's many ways to do it. There's so many different avenues. There's so many different ways of the mountaintop, right? I just teach the mindset piece of like observing your thoughts, getting aware of your thinking, making the change and choosing again, right? Like this is how we can do it, but there's so many ways out there that you can. Okay. So if you want different results in your life, you need to change one thing, and that is your thinking, all right? So, so many of us will go to our actions. So many of us will go to, I have to do something different. I have to do more, be more, achieve more to create more in my life. And I'm here to tell you, it's not true, okay? That is why New Year's resolutions don't work, okay? That is why willpower is not the way. In the book, Atomic Habits by James Clear, all right, he writes about this, like in Charles Duhigg, Duhigg, I think, from The Power of Habit, he talks about like, willpower is not the answer. We do not have enough willpower as humans to change our habits. And James Clear talks about, you have to change your identity in order to change an action in your life or a result in your life, right? And by changing your identity, what you're doing is you're changing your thoughts and beliefs. 
So this is how this goes. So this concept is called the model. Brooke Castillo like coined it, but she really just took a bunch of different teachings from like NLP and spiritual teachings and different mindset practices and yoga and like all the things. And she condensed it into this. So you can find this sort of model all over the world in all these different practices. But essentially our thoughts create our feelings, our feelings create our actions and our actions create our results, right? So if we want different results, we have to go to our thinking. It isn't about changing our actions. First, we go to our thinking, right? And so this is exactly what we just did. So when we looked at our present circumstance in our life and we saw it from comparing it to the future, we felt not enough, right? All of our thoughts are not enough, which is creating the feelings of an adequacy, not enoughness, uninspired, defeated, right? And those actions will be like none at all, inaction, paralyzed, the same thing over and over and over again, thinking that that will create different results, which is insanity. But if we take our current circumstance, we compare it to who we were five years ago, and we feel proud, grateful, inspired, we feel reborn right? Then all of a sudden the action may or may not change, but the feeling behind the action changes, which then creates different results in our life, right? So we just ran through all of this that you could do again and again and again. This is something I literally do multiple times a day, and this alone will change your life. So this is the other thing I forgot to say in the beginning. Everything we're talking about here doesn't stop at this hour, this gets to go on with you for the rest of your life. You get to take all of these tools, all these practices and implement them now. And they get to change your life for the rest of your life. This is such a gift. Doing these kind of webinars this in these events are such a gift to all of us, right? Because we get to take these and we get to change ourselves for like from enoughness, right? And we get to move on from here. So the one thing that I wanted to touch on in this piece that I, I, we could teach an entire webinar just on systems of oppression and circumstance and privilege, right? So there are also circumstances in our life, that, right? Circumstances are not things we can control. There are systems that are put in place to make us feel not enough, for us to internalize that we're not enough, right? To keep us down. And these are systems of oppression. And so we have to acknowledge that these are in place and they're in place for every single one of us on different levels, right? That have different impacts on us. But we have to understand that these are a part of it and these are a circumstance. And so, of course, we're gonna feel not enough. And I'm gonna talk about compassion in just a second. Of course, we're gonna feel not enough. Of course, we're gonna internalize that. That's like why they were created. And when we can acknowledge them and become aware of them, we get to change our thinking about them. And over time, that is how hopefully when enough of us do it and come together, we can change those systems, right? But when you understand them, when you're aware of them, understand that they are in place and you get to say, oh, this is why I feel not enough. This is why I feel less than. This is why I feel unworthy is because these systems have deemed my life less than and unworthy. And now that I know that I've internalized this, what do I want to believe about myself? All right, so I wanted to make sure that I said that before we moved on, okay? And that could be an entire webinar on its own. So now, moving back into a space of not enoughness, or sorry, not enough, to en enoughness, right? And to worthiness, I want to give you the next minute, because we're coming up on time. I wanna make sure we get through everything. How are you different now than you were 90 days ago? You have changed. And so just to give this a little bit of perspective, 90 days ago was January 28th, Whew, mind blowing. Okay, so I want you to take a moment and I want you to just write down like, how are you different? What has changed in your life? What habit is, have you let go of or started? What relationships have changed? What decisions have you made? What beliefs have you changed that make you different now than you were 90 days ago?
And when you have something, drop it in the comments. We're probably gonna go right up to time, but that's good. Drop it in the comments. How are you different now than you were 90 days ago? I restructured my schedule to start with three main objectives to fulfill. So good. They actually talk about that in the gap in the game. I don't know if you've read it, Rosara, but they, uh, yes, so good. What is that giving you? I think for me, like I've allowed myself to slow down and like remember my power regardless of my productivity. Like that has been huge in my life. So keep it coming, drop it in. When you have a second, drop it in the chat. Great, great, great. Keep dropping it in. I'm gonna keep going because I wanna make sure that we get to everything. All right. A lot more productivity, yeah, so good. But we are more than our productivity. Okay, so now, I want you, this is about like getting out of our head and into our life, right? Oh, good. Sally, I want to read yours. I am stronger, clearer, inspired. I believe in myself now and that my dreams are achievable. I look at myself differently now. I am committed to myself. Amazing. So inspiring. So good. All right. So I want you to write down what is one goal, vision, dream change that you want to see in your life right now. All right. So I want you to write down one thing. As hard as that is. I want you to write down one thing, okay? And then how are you thinking about it currently? And what feelings do those thoughts bring up? How are you thinking about it currently? And what feelings do those thoughts bring up? I have no idea what just happened, but I hope everything is working correctly. Ellen, is everything okay? Hi, Cindy, yes, everything is okay. I can see you. Okay, okay. I'm gonna go ahead and hop back in. Yes, sure. Um, I apologize for that. All of a sudden it just kicked me out for whatever reason, and that's no okay. Everyone uh, is still here. <laughs> okay, yay. All right, I apologize everyone. And let's, let me go. Into present happen. Yeah, it's so weird. This is fine. My service is perfect. Okay. Uh, let's see. Go back into it, and it's like it never happened. All right. Mm -hmm. So you all had a little extra time. Perfect. All right. So now that you've come in right? You know what you're currently thinking and what feelings this is bringing up. Now I want to talk about a really important piece, right? Offering yourself compassion. So why does it make sense that you're feeling this way? And this in one of my favorite phrases to offer myself compassion, because let me tell you this, we cannot hate and shame ourselves to change. We cannot hate or shame ourselves to create. Okay. We cannot hate and shame ourselves to manifest. We only can love ourselves to it, right? And be kind to ourselves to it and offer ourselves compassion to it, 
right? And so one of my favorite phrases to say to myself, like, of course I feel this way, right? Of course I feel like this is hard. No one ever showed me the way, right? Of course I feel this way. Look what was modeled and told to me growing up. Of course I feel this way, right? And like, and then validate yourself, right? So I want you to write that phrase down. Like, of course I feel this way because, and then I want you to keep going, keep validating yourself until you feel that peace and, and place of compassion. Okay, so now I want you to take any sort of, of the, like the negative thinking that you're thinking currently and I want you to prove yourself wrong, All right? So this is, again, another way to change your thinking. What else could be true, right? And find evidence of that, right? So if you are thinking like, there's no way that I could create that, well, what else could be true, right? Who else, like me, has created it? Who else has beaten the odds, right? And so you ask yourself and challenge yourself to like flip it and then find the evidence to support that new belief. And finding the evidence is one of the, the most powerful things. Okay. Um, so someone asked me if we don't find anything relevant or anything different from 90 days ago, does that mean our thoughts are blocked and we have to take action? No. So what it means is that there's so much evidence that you have changed. It's just you're not seeing it. Right. So I want you to like go to even the subtlest things, right? Like I haven't drank coffee in like a few weeks. I drink tea, right? Maybe there's just been a couple thoughts that have been different. Maybe that you have like decided to like cut yourself some slack, right? Maybe you started talking to someone new. I want you to open your mind to what is possible. Okay. And like open your mind to seeing like, okay, how am I seeing things how am I not seeing things that are different and what would I need to open in my mind in order to do so it all comes from here there's no action that needs to be taken right even being on this shows you that you're doing something different like you took you are taking this you've already changed so that's again what is like that thought of I haven't created anything new I haven't done anything different right what else could be true I just haven't seen it yet I haven't found the thought that works yet right? And finding evidence of the opposite, right? And then what would you need to believe in order to make this new goal, vision, dream change? What would you need to believe about your life, about yourself in order to make this happen? Okay. We only have a couple minutes left, so I'm going to keep on going, but I want you, I, I hope that we can share these slides because I know that these are all really powerful, um, so I don't know how we can make that happen, but Ellen, maybe you and I can talk about it. All right. So here's the secret. Are you ready? We don't have to believe every thought we think. How do we get out of our head and into our life? Realize that we don't have to believe everything that goes on up here, right? Just like you're not going to believe a random person that comes up to you in the street and tells you something. You're going to be like, huh, I'm going to go fact check that, right? Or like, who are they? The same thing is true. You don't have to believe everything you think because not everything out there is true. Just like not everything in here is true. And so I want you to begin doubting your doubts and saying, okay, how can I challenge my thinking today? Right? And like whoever or asked me that question in the comments is like, let's challenge, let me challenge my thought today. Let me challenge the thought that I haven't changed. And I'm open to seeing myself differently. Right? This whole thing, if we allow ourselves to be wrong, if we allow ourselves to change, this is what is going to make the world a better place. And we're going to inspire everyone around us because what we do for ourselves is a ripple effect to everyone else in our life. You, you start by showing and leading by example of what is possible and everyone else will follow. So remember, we have control over one thing and that is our perspective. So what we're doing here is we're rewiring our neural pathways. So like I said, we, our brain and our bodies like the most fast, efficient thing, right? Like a highway, right? And that's what I like to use as an analogy. These not enough stories, these inadequacy stories are like highways in our brain because we've believed them for so long that they are fast, they're efficient, they're quick, that they, we think they're gonna take us from A to B the fastest, but they're not, they're actually gonna take the longest. They're just fast and efficient. But it's not the first or second thought that matters. 
right? So that first initial thought of I'm not enough, that's okay to have. That's going on the highway. So what I want you to do is I want you to take the next exit. And what you and I are going to do is I'm taking you to the forest and we're going bushwhacking. Way harder, takes way more time, takes way more energy, but we are forging a new path in your mind from a place of enoughness. But guess what? Every time you go bushwhacking, every time you go on that new trail, it gets clear and clear and clear, easier and easier and easier. You know the way better, better and better. It gets faster and efficient. And every you are the resource. So every time you take resources away from the highway and put it in this new path, right? The highway begins deteriorating. And this new path then becomes your new normal. So yes, it's going to take time. Yes, it's going to take intention. Yes, it's going to take observing your mind. But every single time, just like feeding those wolves, every single time it matters, right? So don't get discouraged. Doesn't matter how long it takes. Choose to see your progress, right? Choose to measure from where you were to where you are now. And that is what's going to make the change. You can get out of your head and into your life with this one decision just to choose again, to choose to show up for yourself, to choose that this is possible for you, right? With this one decision, by choosing your perspective, self-compassion and grace, seeing your progress, you become unstoppable. Right on time. So thank you so much. Does anyone have any questions? You can follow me. I talk about this all the time. I teach this stuff all the time. This is what I do at Instagram, at Jilly Johnson Coaching, my website, jillyjohnson.com, email jilly at jillyjohnson.com. If you have any questions, drop it in the comments. Let me see. Thank you so much. Very eye-opening. So good. Great. So good. You are so welcome, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Loved it. Yay. I'm so happy. I'm so happy. Does anyone have any questions in the final minute that you need me to clarify? Do you have any comments? I'm so grateful. Please take these slides. Please use these. Please follow me. Connect with me. Um, let me know what you thought, right, on Instagram, via email. I love to connect with everyone and uh, make connections all over the world. So thank you, everyone. Thank you for choosing to spend this time with me. It is the greatest honor that someone can give you. It's the one, the one resource that we don't have more of is time. And so for someone to bless you with their time and give you that is the greatest gift. So I'm so grateful, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have an amazing rest of your day. I look forward to connecting with you. And, uh, and until next time.